Good afternoon. We're here today with Jan O'Leary, who's Executive Director of Mystic Valley Elder Services. And I'm very happy to be here today in our Senior Focus Show. We work closely with NORCAM and North Reading. So we're going to have a little discussion, Dan and I, about our services that we partner with, with North Reading Elder Services and Mystic Valley Elder Services. So Dan, tell me a little bit about yourself and who Mystic Valley is. Happy to be here. It's great to be in North Reading this afternoon with you, Mary. Um, I just want to say uh, to all the viewers how important you are to Mystic Valley Elder Services, not only as the director of the Senior Center and the Elder Affairs, but you're my boss, ah. the president of the board of Mystic Valley Elder Services, yeah. and a great president, Well, thank by you, the way. Dan. I can't think of a better person. I'd rather boss well, around. That, that, and, you know, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, you know, you just talked about, Mary, as being partners, and I think that's maybe in one way uh, one of our most important messages today to get across the viewers here in North Reading about how Elder Affairs in North Reading and Mystic Valley work together. Uh, and the happy thing is, you know, we've had a great, I'll call it a great marriage uh, for over 40 years between Mystic Valley and North Reading. Um, started out way back in the 70s with my namesake, Edith O'Leary. Oh, that would be true. And the um, yes, namesake of our senior center, the, the same Edith O'Leary. Yeah, I mean, we've, uh, Edie and I have been, she was a mentor to me and, and a good, good friend and a good partner. And I always felt like even though I wasn't actually part of the North Reading O'Leary's Formally, informally, I was one of the family members that was yeah, there. So it's always true. great to be here. Um, our job, like your job, is to serve the community. And in a sentence, 25 words or less, the role of Mystic Valley Elder Services is to help people, older people and adults living with disabilities, stay in the community, independent as possible, for as long as possible. And we do that through a whole variety of programs, and we can talk about those as we go along in the conversation here. And I think one of the most important things that Mystic Valley can do in terms of when we're helping people stay at home, living well, independently, safely, is to, at the same time, get them out, engage in the community, and engage with the senior center. And some folks can do that, some folks can't, but to the ones um, that can get out, the socialization aspect, the programming at the, uh, at the senior center, and all the things that you do here in North Reading, I think is a tremendous asset to people who live here in the community. I think socialization is the key. Getting right. out, meeting people. And I think one of the great ways that we partnership is sometimes you get into the home first before we do. Mm -hmm. And your caseworkers in the home visits are always encouraging, come to the senior center. Right. You come for the first time, you go, mm. you come for the second time, your smile gets a little bit bigger. And you come for the third time and you're just a regular and you're hanging out every day. Right. And I think both you and I would um, wish more people would access the programs at the Senior Center. Uh, I know it's sort of, um, you know, I use this term and I will say it about myself, I feel like we're all stuck in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. you know? And it's hard to make new friends. You go into the lunchroom and who do you sit with? Uh, and I don't care whether you, you know, you're seven years old or 75 years yeah. old. That's always a challenge. But I know when people come to the Senior Center that it doesn't have, it won't be like that. It's, it's funny you welcoming. Say that. It's a fun place to be. We're all in it together. And it's just a, it's just a good, good afternoon or a good morning or a good day. It's the same analogy I use all the time. It's like coming to middle school to a new right. school for the first or second day. It's not easy, it's but not when you come two or three days in a row, right. people welcome you, you become a friend. Yeah. And it's very familiar and it's a good place to be. Yeah. And, you know, in, in addition to being a good place to be, I, and we both, you know, talk about this with people we interact with. Part of life, part of living well, you know, it's getting up in the morning, it's getting dressed, having your breakfast, feeling good, getting, go getting going, but then you have to have a purpose, right? And, and at, least, at least from my perspective, that might be for some of us going to work, volunteering, a hobby, but for most of us, it's interaction with other people. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the stimulation of the mind and the body and the arts and all of that that yes. goes into it. And whether you're at home or whether you're at the senior center or at some other place, we want people to interact and be part of a community. And I know North Reading is a great community. Yeah. And we both try to work on that uh, to help people yeah. feel good about living here. And there's a lot of great people here in North Reading. Community is my key word that I use all the time. I'm even trying to sell my programs to the, um, to the town officials. Right. North Reading, actually, um, we have a very um, vast growing older population and by older I mean 60 plus and of right. course Dan you and I know that's yeah that's not old no it's not old <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna say and I'm not gonna say this about you Mary but 
I'm age eligible. Oh, now, now, right now, I don't need the services, but I'm happy to know that if I do need them, Mystic Valley yeah. is going to be there for me. Well, I'm right with you, and at least I know the <laughs> phone numbers right now. But 24.4% um, of our population, believe it or not, in North Reading are 60 and older, and that number is only going to grow. Only going to grow. Only going to grow. People are staying in North Reading. Yeah. They want to continue living North Reading, and they want to age healthy yep. and happy. So, when I, just can I jump in on Absolutely. this one? Absolutely. I want to just say, and I think this one you're going to agree with me on, this is not a bad thing. A lot of people talk about, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? All these older people are coming. It's a burden on society. No, it's not. Older people are well. They contribute. They're volunteers. They're part of the community. Some of us may need from time to time a little bit of a helping hand. But you know, our society adjusted to all of us. I'm a baby boomer. You know, we built schools. We built communities. North Reading expanded with housing and after the Second World War. Everybody thought that was a great thing. I say it's still a great thing. Older people are not burdens on society. They're contributors and assets to our society and our culture. Oh, I agree. They're so major contributors I never to say, our society. oh, woe is us that we have all these older people coming. I say, great, let's keep it going. Let's help people contribute. Let's help them live well. And the fact of the matter is, both you and I know from our experience, the good news is we're living longer. And most of us are living well and well into our 80s. Now, you know, we have, Mystic Valley serves 11 communities, as you well know, from Winthrop up to North Reading and everything in between, sort of in between Route 93 and Route 1, if you think about it, North Reading, Reading, moving down into Melrose Stoneham area, then Malden, Medford, Everett, and then Chelsea, Ruby, and Winthrop. So we're here for all of those communities. Every community is different. Every community is unique. But at, the, at, at a core level, everybody who lives in those communities wants the same thing. They want good, good safe neighborhoods. They want good schools. They want good roads and bridges. Mm -hmm. And they want to live at home for the most part. You know, I, I've never had a person say to me in all the years I've been doing this work happily for, for 40 years, anybody's ever said to me, I want to move to a nursing home. Families might say, mm -hmm. mom and dad need a little more help. But I've never had a person say to me, I can't wait to go to a nursing home. Now, I'll be quick to add, I'm not anti-nursing home. My attitude is we need fewer, better nursing homes, more, better home care. And that's our goal. Oh, that is our goal. That's our goal, is to help people age successfully for as long as possible. And if they need to make a move to an assisted living or a nursing home, we're going to help them do that. We can do that. And th that's what we you know, that's our goal, is to help people make good choices. For us, you know, our... our my message to the viewers is, don't wait until there's a crisis. Call us. Figure out what the options are currently. If you need a little bit of help, we can do that. If you need a little more help, we can do that as well. Mystic Valley, just like the Council on Aging, we have programs that are free and at no cost and that are targeted to people with limited means. But that doesn't mean we only serve that group. We serve anybody, all incomes, all ages, no disabilities, some disabilities, a lot of disabilities. So I just tell the viewers, don't, don't rule yourself out. Make the phone call. Call us, 781-324-7705. And now that we live in the modern world, you reach us on the World Wide Web <laughs> at www.mves.com. Org. So they can call you at the senior center, and you're gonna, we're going to get people to you. You're going to get people to us. Uh, that would be true. I mean, right. I firmly believe that people believe should stay in the communities that they help build, right? Live healthy, and we can do this as a partnership. And um, and for, we say this all the time, Jim. Right. You know, you don't know us about us till you need us. Right. So the most difficult part is trying to get the word out that we're trying to talk about now. We're here we are here. today. That's why we're here. So. Um, can you give me a few examples about it? I mean, I know it. Yeah. My, I, I don't function in the town of North Reading in my department without my 99.9% .9 relationship with Mystic Valley Elder Services. So maybe, Jan, you give us a few I, examples yeah. of what you do for the folks in North Reading. Yeah, so i um, happy to, Mary. So we'll take an easy one. Where somebody may have a, just a question about housing or how do you, you know, who, who's eligible for public housing, or they might have a question on health insurance. Um, Kind of, I'm reaching 65, and I need some assistance with maybe picking the right Medicare plan and the dr or drug plan, 
or you're, you're concerned about your mother or father and they may not be feeling like they're not doing so well and getting a little confused. So you make a phone call. Yourself, a family member, we're going to talk to you. Just t tell, me what you, tell me what you're facing. Mm -hmm. One of the things people worry about is I have to know in advance all the programs and services. No, that's our job. Mm -hmm. You tell me what it is you're facing, what kind of a challenge it is, what, what's the issue. We're going to talk through that. If you want us to come out at no cost to the consumer, we're going to come out. We'll meet you at your home. We'll meet you in a coffee shop. You can come to Malden. You can meet Senior you at the North, Senior Center, North Reading. We'll come to you. We'll sit down. We're going to have a conversation like we're doing now. Then we're going to come up with some ideas that are going to make sense for you in terms of what you may need now, what you may need in the sh near, short term, or in the long term. Some of those services will be uh, potentially subsidized or at no cost to you, donation. Other things, you, we'll give you options to purchase directly and we'll, in effect, because we buy a lot of service from a lot of vendors, we can make those services available, generally speaking, at a lower rate than what if you were going to buy privately. So there's all kinds of options. Our job, I'll give you an example, um, on the sort of the other end where people facing a crisis. I'm, I'll say, I may fall, God forbid I break a hip. I go to the hospital. Whatever hospital is, and we have a lot of fine institutions in this, this area. It could be in Boston, could be in the North Shore, uh, in this, uh, over in Leahy or wherever. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to coordinate with the folks at the hospital. So if you're transitioning home, we're going to be working with you and the team at the hospital or the rehabilitation facility so that as you transition back from that institution back to the community, we're going to work with you so that services are, are there. This is particularly important for somebody who's alone. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I use this term, and I, I don't mean to be, make light of it, but I call it the bread and milk issue. So you go to the hospital, you, you're being discharged. Let's face it, no matter how great that hospital is, you're not feeling your best because there's something happened to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They, t they get, you, get you going, yeah. but you're not going to convalesce or rehab in the hospital. You're going to be sent home to do that. So when you're getting out of the hospital, say you're living alone, you haven't been there for three, four, five days, maybe longer. So who's, who's taking care of getting the bread and milk? You need some, little, you need some things at the house. You may, need, you may get a bunch of prescriptions at the hospital. How do you get those? CVS, Walgreens, the local pharmacy may deliver, they may not. So we try to work with that person to make sure that as they're transitioning home, those kind of things are taken care of. Now, you know, you have to get up in the morning. You may need some help with bathing or dressing or toileting those kind of very practical day-to-day -day things we can have arranged for personal care workers that are working in conjunction with the visiting nurse of the certified home health agency so that they're doing the skilled work, maybe the wound care and the, or the PT and the OT, and then on the back end we're helping out with the yes. basic daily activities of daily living. So there's a whole range of things that as long as we work together as a team, that's the true. family, the individual, the, the elder services, us. Of visiting nurses, visiting we're all nurse, working together. We're all working together for the same purpose, is to try to get people back home, keep them home, get them on the right track to the extent they need a little bit of help with there. When they don't, great. They graduate, they go back to their daily lives and go to the senior center. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a great program for all of us. Right. Um, again, you have to know us and what we right. do. You want to wait for that crisis to happen. But besides a scenario like that, there's so much more. You talked about insurances. I'm turning 65. What right. am I going to do? I know I had a lot of friends who are in that group this mm -hmm. year that are totally panicking. They would say, Let, I'm going to call Mary. Mary knows. Mary doesn't know. But Mary does know that Jeff's our shine counselor. And he knows. Right. So getting people... In, in line with that. Yep. Um, we have great programs. We do a money management program, Mystic Valley, that mm -hmm. some clients, you know, they get a little bit older, they may forget how to write a check or pay a check, or they're paying their cable bill twice. Yeah, or they, you know, and, and as much, and Medicare is one of the greatest programs in America, and they try to tell us a, a lot of information. They send you statements that say this is not a bill, but it looks just like a bill, mm -hmm. right? So some of that is just sorting out what's a bill, what's not a bill, what's a solicitation, and God, you know, I say this these days, particularly, what's a scam? Oh, scams. And so we, in that program, that money management program you're talking about, Mary, that's really a volunteer who's coming in not to, prov not to advise you on your stock portfolio. This is real basic stuff, sorting through the mail and figuring out 
what you're going to pay, what you're not going to pay, but it's always in the, con the, the checkbook is always with the consumer. I know. For, uh, this sounds, it sounds kind of silly, but we had a consumer not too long ago who was still had a rotary phone and I believe was still being charged a monthly fee wow. yeah. for using their rotary phone when they could go down to Walmart and buy something for short money. Right. And, uh, what they're paying probably on a monthly oh, basis. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. finding little things out like that that are very important. That's right. I mean, the other program that probably if people sort of are glazing over at this moment, I'm gonna, we're going to try to grab them back, right, is the program that everybody knows about is Meals on Wheels. And, and to me, this is one of the greatest programs in America. And I'm not talking about necessarily the food. I think the food is good, it's healthy, it's nutritious, and most people like it. But I think, and you, you and I know this from our collaboration, probably equally important to the actual meal is the driver is the Meals on Wheels driver who comes every day, generally it's the same person every mm -hmm. day, develops a little, little relationship there, can check on a person, the safety check and the human interaction. Because for a lot of the Meals on Wheels folks, they're not able to go to the senior center. That's why they're getting mm -hmm. Meals on Wheels. And so for, the, for some of those folks, the only person they have may see, a human being, not on TV, but a per, an actual person who will say, good morning, Ms. Prenny, how you doing, blah, 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 is that Meals on Wheels driver. And to me, that's one of the best parts of the Meals on Wheels program. In North Reading, that man is called Dan the Mandition. We have Dan, who is the most it. wonderful Meals driver. Um, being a small outfit here in North Reading, we don't have many... Um, employees and much staff are on a small budget but Dan sees a lot of the people that I don't see or maybe right. not even know of yep. so every morning I kind of glance at that list and he'll let me know if something's not right with somebody or um, yep. even you know so-and-so needs cat food but right. they're afraid to call to see him get a ride to get him some cat food he is yeah. our outreach worker yeah and uh, they deliver you know Five days a week, all types of weather, and in North Reading, you can imagine, you That's know, right. it, when the snow is bad, it's bad. Yeah. And so. Uh, I mean, what are we? We're delivering. What is he making? Probably 35, 40 stops a day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here in town. And it's and a big town. He he, and he knows town. everyone. Right. Yep. I mean, those are the kind of people. Sort of. I'm going to say, the unsung heroes. You know, you and I here today. You're everybody knows you here in North Reading, but it's those kind of folks. Yeah. Not not to diminish your role uh, in any no. way, shape, or form. But those are the those oh, are Dan just is my fantastic hero. people. Dan great is people. my hero. And then again, we have concrete meals at the meal sites. Right. And we have great meal site managers. And, we, and it's funny, we have Brenda Bugden, who's been working with us for years, for over 20 years. She right. was our meals driver before That's Dan right. came. And now she's working as She graduated the, to the meal site. She, she graduated <laughs> she to the promotion. meal site. And uh, <laughs> she has a great sense of humor. She's so caring. Uh, she has a great relationship with everyone who comes right. up. And it's part of a full circle. We're a family. Right. You know, you and I, just before we went on, on air, we were talking about sort of what makes a great human services person. And, you know, I think in some ways you can learn all the technical things, but you have to have it here, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, you have to care about people. You have to have a, a genuine respect for other people. And, you know, we're lucky enough at Mystic Valley where I think we have some really, really wonderful, great employees. And similarly with you here in, in the town. And that makes a world of difference. It does make a world of difference. It does make, and we're a small town, so we know, we know our people. Right. And if I don't know, Dan knows them, or maybe Brendan knows them, or right. I, there's a caseworker that's working with Mystic Valley. Um, we have a great relationship with both our fire and police departments because a lot of times yep. they're the ones that are seeing people firsthand. And you know they'll call out and say, "Mary, I was at so and so's house today. She just need a little help." You know. Do you want me to call Mystic Valley? I haven't trained. Do you want me to have him call Mystic Valley? Or should right. I call Mystic Valley? So uh, we're able to do that yep. as a community, and it, and it works out fantastic. And, you know, we have programs that kind of fit in the senior center. You know, we have transportation. We don't, uh, we have in-house, in-town transportation. So that's very helpful. Uh, we have programs at the senior center that tries to keep people healthy. But there's um, exercises. We have meals. We have speakers. We have great social events, but we always know we can partner with Mystic Valley. Yeah, likewise. I mean, every every year I have to do a, a little talk for my budget, and in my the board of selectmen in town have been absolutely wonderful. I mean, they know we last year we right. got almost nine hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of services from Mystic Valley Elder Services with our partnership, and there's no way that the town budget would have paid for anything like that. We just don't have the money. Well, and. 
let's give credit where credit is due. The town has made a, a, a strong commitment to elder services. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, for all our, you know, imperfections here in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth, I have to, I'm going to say, and I'm biased, but we have one of the best elder home care, community-based care systems anywhere in the country. So, you know, when people think about, gee, you know, taxes are high, this and that, mm -hmm. and, you know, traffic's a lot, and those are issues. There's no question about it. But there are things that we have here in Massachusetts through the uh, good uh, work of the legislature and the governor and others that it has, it helps people, that helps consumers in a, in a meaningful way. You know, one of the things we were talking about in terms of all these services, and I think it's hopefully important to the viewers to know, both of us, neither Elder Service or Mystic Valley, are in this to make money. Right? Oh, no, there's we're, no money to We're make. here, you and I, if you will, are public servants. You actually work for the town. I work for Mystic Valley Elder Services. We're a private, not-for-profit corporation. And for Mystic Valley, as you know as a board member, we do fundraising to bring additional services for people that don't quite fit into any other program, but they have a need. And if we can help with that, that's what we do. You've been great as the board president in promoting this. We have some state money, we have some federal money, we have local money, we have private fundraising. So we put that together in a way so that we're spending those resources wisely and well for consumers without trying to sell them anything they don't need or want. And I think that's important for the viewers to know that when we come out with you to sit down, there's no hidden agenda. Our agenda is to help that person figure out the right options, the right choices for them, and not try to be directing to, to a business or a service that we, quote, might financially benefit by. There's no, we are completely financially disinterested from any mm -hmm. of the services. We purchase a lot of services from vendors, whether it's cab companies and homemaker agencies and meals programs and on and on. But in terms of our goal, it's our goal as a non-for-profit is to help people remain in the community for as long as possible. That's it. You know, it makes my job president. easier because I know when oh, I yeah. call Mystic Valley Elder Services, I know that I'm not selling any of the people in North Reading anything. They're going to be treated fairly. Uh, there's no money to be made, uh, right. and we're going to do the best we can. Yeah, to we're going to do them the best home. we can. I mean, you know, it's I've been at my job for a long time. It's the greatest job in the world. I work for great people like you and the other board members, and we know when we get together at a board meeting, we talk about. How are we doing in terms of helping people? That's what we talk about. Then you look at the financial statements and say, oh good, we're not going out of business, we're financially sound, we're operating efficiently, but ultimately it's about who have we helped Absolutely. today? Absolutely. And that's, that's a great yeah. thing. And it is a great failing. We're, yeah. we're in a really great business. We're in a great business. I... We're in a growth industry, by the way. That's right. And right? look at my numbers, they're growing with 24.4, they're only gonna get higher. Well, you know, you were talking about that, the 24, and, and you and I both know that the 60 plus population is growing. It's the 85 plus, the people 85 years and older are the fastest growing of that group. So we have a lot to look forward to. I, I think it's exciting. This week alone, we had two 90th birthday parties over at our senior mm -hmm. center. And we always have a saying, it's bad luck if you don't have a piece of a 90 year old birthday cake, whether you want it or not. Right. And just last year, we celebrated a birthday for a 100 year old yeah. who actually um, got her high school diploma at the same occasion. She never had a high school diploma. That's fantastic. She had to work, left school, and were able to give her a high school diploma. So it just, it was amazing for her. It was amazing for us. Yeah. It's a great population. I don't look at people. Um, when I see people, I don't see ages. I don't see disabilities. I just right. see possibilities, right? The possibilities yeah. and just wonderful people. There's yeah. so much to learn from people. You know, and we're talking a little bit about here in the Commonwealth. I, I think it's uh, appropriate to acknowledge in this community the good work of the state, rep state representative, Absolutely. Brad Jones, the leader, uh, and um, Senator, Senator uh, Bruce Tarr, uh, and our congressman, uh, Seth Moulton. So, you know, there's a, we're happy to say we're not going to be political, but I will in the sense say people, are, no matter which party, affiliation, background, people come together in this community politically for elders. And we, we're very fortunate to have the kind of representatives and congresspeople and senators uh, who do a great job, who, who 
who are truly there for people in this community, we often in, in say, addition to the Board of Selectmen, by no, the way. We often say we have the most elder-friendly legislators in the entire Commonwealth, so we're blessed to have the group that we, we have that work with our And, and, and you and I both services. know from community, uh, not, not only here in North Reading, but throughout the Mystic Valley region, we've earned the trust and respect of the legislative delegation because people like you and me and others, uh, other council and aging directors and uh, people in those communities, work very hard, just like we're talking about, to do the right thing. And I think legislators across the party lines, across the region, mm -hmm. recognize that and truly do their best to make sure that, that communities have the, uh, the infrastructure and the services they need. Yeah, we're very fortunate to live in North Reading. Yes, it's a great community. It's a great community. I can't tell you enough how, how pleased I am to be here today with you. And, and I hope that the viewers learned a little bit uh, feel more comfortable about calling both Mystic Valley Elder Services and Reading Elder Services. North no, Reading Elder Services. What, North Reading Elder Services. It happens all the oh, time. Oh, bad one. Sometimes I we're, apologize. Sometimes they're even called no reading. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That's even more difficult. North Reading Elder Services. But, um, yeah, no matter where you call, you're gonna, even if you called Reading Elder call, Services, you'd absolutely. still get Absolutely, if you called Reading Elder right, Services, yeah, we get in touch with the, the right, right people and get the right answers. That's right. So, yeah. Good to be here. Thank you we'll very much going. for coming. we got a lot, many more years to, to help out, right? Uh, oh, many more keep years going. left. All righty. Thank you, Dan, for coming. Right. Thank, Thank you, you. NorCamp, for having us. Good afternoon.